All right, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was bike fit. Now, bike fit's a really contentious um, topic when we talk about uh, road cycling and high performance cycling because bike fit can mean a number of different things to different people and different disciplines of cycling. But generally, when someone's talking about bike fit, we can kind of simplify things, at least start at the simple part and, and go from there. Most people who I ride with or I see riding on group rides or people that I've coached in the past, there's some very simple things and small things that we could change on their bike without having to purchase anything, without taking much time to make their uh, cycling performance and efficiency a lot better. So these are the things that I would say you might want to think about um, that don't necessarily cost a lot of money and you don't necessarily have to go and pay for an expensive fitting on your bike when maybe you're not quite at that point yet but you at least want to make sure that you've got a few things right now one of those things is having the proper seat height there is a bit of personal preference involved there but where you want to be with your seat height is when you're in the saddle and your shoe or your foot is at the bottom of the pedal stroke we want about a 15 to 20 degree bend in your knee if your knee is perfectly straight, then your pelvis is going to rock back and forth on the saddle and your lower back is probably going to start bothering you after about 20 minutes to half an hour. If your saddle is too low, you're probably putting undue stress on your knees and you're not supporting your knee properly at the most powerful part of the pedal stroke and therefore you're going to feel pain in your knee after a while. So having your seat at the right height is going to make a big difference. A lot of riders are unaware that their seat can actually be changed in as far as the tilt in the front that can make a big difference as to how comfortable you are uh, on longer rides just by dropping the nose of the saddle or the seat by a couple of degrees or bringing it up a couple of degrees or flattening it out if it's not already flat. Something that's easy to do, uh, doesn't cost any money and can make a big difference as, as to your performance on the bike. The more aggressive you're getting in your stance or your layout on your bike, meaning the handlebars lower, the seat higher, especially for those who are going to be on triathlon or time trial bikes, Dropping the nose of the saddle as you get into that more aggressive position is going to be um, really important to consider because you're not sitting in the same position as somebody who has a higher handlebar um, set up on their bike. So a little bit of drop in the nose of the saddle or a little bit of tilt backward to put you in a different position on your saddle, on your bike, that can make a big difference without having to purchase anything. You also want to know that saddles have rails on them that can move fore and aft. That's not to bring you closer to the handlebars, but more to center you over the power system of the bike, which is the bottom bracket. So bringing you more forward is going to engage your calves more, um, get you on top of the pedal, uh, allow you to get more power into the pedals with um, using all of the muscles in your leg. Pushing back on the saddle um, can put extra stress on your knees, and it engages the larger muscle groups in your legs, like your quads and your hamstrings. So generally we wanna find uh, a center point where just behind your knee, when the pedals are parallel to the floor, uh, your knee is gonna drop down a plumb line through your pedal axle. But just things to think about, um, that you can make some small changes to your bike and your saddle position and get a lot more power, a lot more efficiency, and maybe even take care of some issues that you've been having. The other thing to consider is your handlebars relationship to your seat. So that's called the drop. So how far does it drop from the, the saddle down to the handlebars? Having your handlebars up high or level with the saddle, initially we will be more comfortable, but it's going to be harder to get more power into the pedals and you're going to be less aerodynamic. The reason for doing a, a training program with aerobic power training systems is that we're trying to get the maximum performance out of you and we're trying to get more power. So by dropping your handlebars down, you're able to pull up on them as you drive through the pedal stroke and you're getting in a more athletic aerodynamic position when you're on the bike. Now, a lot of bicycles have spacers um, or uh, washers, some people would call them, that you can move around and place on top of the stem or below the stem to get the optimum height um, or drop from the, the saddle to the handlebars, again, without having to buy anything. Some of the stems, the thing that holds the handlebar on bikes, they can be flipped over to have a negative rise that drops down so that again you get into that more um, aerodynamic athletic position without having to go buy a new stem. Um, stems come in a lot of different uh, configurations and price points so even if you did have to buy a different one to get into the position that you think you need or a fitter helps you get into, it doesn't have to be expensive. The high-end ones can be spendy uh, for stiffness and lightness, but that's not necessarily uh, what you have to look at. So things to consider again, <clears throat> your seat height, your seat position, 
the distance from your saddle to your bars, which is known as reach, and the drop down from the saddle to the bars, which is called the drop. And so things to think about that can make your bike fit a lot better. Um, and then things that you can do to adjust your bike to, to fit you better up in the front end are the angulation of the handlebars, the, the levers, um, and even the size of the handlebars can be changed. Obviously not a thing that you can adjust, but that you can purchase bars because they come in different widths um, and they come in different depths of drop for different size of riders and different preferences. So things to think about, how is your bike laid out? Are you in the best powerful position to get the most out of the fitness that you're finding from your new training program?